Trombley had been invited to demonstrate one of his generators at the United Nations and the U.S. Senate. But these events were undermined by the first Bush administration. Then the device itself was taken in a government raid. Trombley's experience isn't unique. Almost every time I found an inventor with a promising new technology in the field of free energy, he told a similar story of suppression. Inventor John Bedini began working with Tesla's theories of radiant energy decades ago and has produced an assortment of battery charging devices that generate more energy than it takes to run them. He announced that he was going to start offering them at low cost. Soon after that, he was attacked in his lab and warned not to produce the devices. For his own safety, he had to let go of marketing free energy. These are all devices from labs I personally visited. Now. Now the quality of this footage is obviously poor and I'm not expecting this to convince you. My point is that being there with these inventors, accompanied by experts, and seeing these new energy devices in operation convinced me that the technology is real. And the implications of that to me are absolutely thrilling. Canadian John Hutchison not only created some free energy batteries, but also used Tesla's theories to counter gravity, to make objects float. This could revolutionize the field of propulsion. His lab was raided and equipment was taken by police and government officials in 1978, 1989, and again in 2000. One of the scientists we were going to interview for this film was Dr. Eugene Malov, an engineer from MIT and Harvard, and editor of Infinite Energy magazine, which covers both theoretical and technological developments in the new energy field. Dr. Malov was mysteriously beaten to death in 2004. If these inventors were all hoaxers and charlatans, I wondered why are they being suppressed so consistently and so brutally? I asked free energy inventor Adam Trombley why he thought this technology was being suppressed and if the UFO phenomenon was related. We've had major military people at great risk to themselves say, yes, these things are real. Why do you think the military-industrial complex doesn't want that statement to be made? Because you start thinking about what kind of technology is behind that. That's the bottom line. The suppression of UFO phenomena is hand-in-hand -hand with the suppression of so-called free energy. The energy is extracted from the fabric of the space around us which means it cannot be metered. That is a direct threat to the single largest industry in the world, energy. It's goodbye ExxonMobil, goodbye oil, goodbye coal, goodbye linear transmission of electricity through power lines, all that gone. Unfortunately, it's someone's $200 trillion piggy bank the proven oil and gas and coal reserves are worth north of $200 trillion. This information coming out would completely change geopolitical power more than anything since well in recorded human history. And it would happen in a generation. I started to examine the breakthrough solutions and much to my surprise these concepts have been proven in hundreds of laboratories throughout the world and yet they have not really seen the light of day. Rather than smashing things together and trying to control the explosion, these new technologies rely on blending, of dancing with what naturally is. The common denominator of all the free energy devices I've seen is that they mimic, in one way or another, the Taurus energy shape. You don't have to believe in free energy technology to be concerned about the repression of ideas and inventions. I found myself thinking, 
what better way to justify our dependence on oil, coal, nuclear, and other dangerous and dirty technologies than to claim there are no better, cheaper alternatives? So much of the pain on the planet has to do with the lack of access to energy. Can you stay warm? Can you get food and water? Can you get hospital care? All that has to do with energy access. If there is a fundamental pattern, which makes sense to me that evolution would be efficient in that way, and we can align with that pattern to create new technologies that will solve these problems, then it's worth it to me to open my mind to these socially taboo subjects. If the new energy technologies were to be set free worldwide, uh, the change would be profound. It would uh, affect everybody. It would be uh, applicable everywhere. Th these technologies are absolutely the, the most important thing that's happened in the history of the world. What Earth ships are really about. We're your guides and your serpents and you're climbing Everest. I get to turn a lot of people on to something really cool that I really believe in and uh, have a blast doing. It's pretty fun, pretty wild. You get to meet all kinds of crazy people and build wicked cool buildings all over the place. You get a really a, a nice sense of self-satisfaction at the end of the day when you can stand back and see what you did um, and know that you did something that was helping and not hurting. These buildings do everything for themselves, and the way they do everything for themselves is not with poles and pipes, lines, and centralized systems. It's a decentralized approach. Each building is a living, breathing cell that is getting everything its inhabitants need from an encounter with the natural phenomena of the planet. the horizon as if they landed from outer space strange otherworldly structures constructed from society's castaways you might expect aliens to emerge but instead they house passionate people with a purposeful way of facing life on this planet using the earth and the environment to solely sustain and support their existence Ahead of their time, perhaps, but a model for generations to come. They are almost like living, breathing machines, providing their own energy, water, and food. The building itself can be a cellular unit that encounters the phenomena of the Earth and does everything. So we heat the buildings by thermal mass and sun. We cool the buildings with sun, with a convection engine. They may be luxurious inside, but most of the Earth ships still appear pretty far out on the exterior. The first time I saw one, I was like, what the hell is that? They're, uh, they're what do you call it, Dr. Zeus. I mean, it, it's like a hobbit village, you know. <laughs> it's kind of a combination of, of uh, outer earthly and Byzantine. They're whatever we want uh, to make them look like. Uh, and like I say, I have built buildings that, that would totally take care of people, but nobody wanted them because they were strange looking. They looked like they landed or whatever. I'm getting pretty good at doing it. And what has happened is the world has gone down, down, down to the point where it really, really needs this. I just happen to be here with this. And so, yeah, not right now I'm, I'm on a magic carpet ride. He's his own man. He's got a vision and a real commitment. This is not just about being an architect, it's about helping people. When I see people 
as stressed and starved right now all over the planet, even the wealthy people. Uh, they're, they're stressed and starved in certain ways, and, and if you could take the people to this planet and make them relaxed and totally comfortable with knowing that they had sustenance for them and their families, they would probably emerge to a completely different level of humanity, which would be beyond politics, beyond economics, it would be unbelievable. People are not trusting anything these days, except maybe the sun, you know. The sun can't be bought out. The sun can't be corrupted. Uh, the rain can't be corrupted. This is a way that people are starting to see it's the truth. It's the only truth.